It's time for today's travel and cruise industry news. With the latest from travel and cruises around the world, here's your host, Chili Falls. Hey, good morning and welcome to Wednesday Travel and Cruise Industry News Podcast. On this, the 10th day of April 2024, coming to you at a special time uh, this morning of 8 a.m. Uh, for the live portion. Uh, coming to you from Marietta, Ohio, still. I uh, Hopefully, the part for the car will be in uh, about 10 o'clock this morning, which is why we're doing the show early, because as soon as it gets here, I got to jump in my car and get over there and get the new wheel and rim installed and get on my way. So... Anyway, so we're doing the show early today. Uh, headlines from today's show. Meyer Werft uh, introduces a futuristic design. Also today, Carnival guest upset over a Do Not Disturb sign. A cliffhanger on MSC World America. Carnival releases some details about Locano Cove and ambitious plans for Thailand and lots more here this morning at 8 a.m. Today is National Cinnamon Crescent Day. Uh, as a matter of fact, I went down to the uh, a little breakfast thingy this morning and had a cinnamon crescent. You know, they're a little muffin rolly kind of things with cinnamon on it. I like that. I like anything with cinnamon, just about. I love good, good fattening cinnamon rolls. Oh, man, I love those things. But I try to stay away from them. If you're listening by the podcast, welcome aboard. You're always uh, welcome here, of course. The uh, the podcast is found on all the, from all the main hitters wherever you get your podcast from. All you have to do is search for travel and cruise industry news, and up pops the fat travel guy. Anytime you're listening to the podcast, want to jump over to the video feed to check out clips or interviews or pictures we're using on that day's show. There's always a link in the description of the podcast, so you can do just that. All right, so with all the uh, upheaval, I should want to call it, of being here in Marietta, and by the way, one of the strong factors about being in Marietta was my uh, breakfast with Brian Fogue yesterday and uh, his gift of a, a bottle of Pogue uh, what's the thing called? Oh, Master Select. It is really good. Um, I, I will. This will not be the only time I drink Pogue. I'll tell you that. I I like it a lot. So I enjoyed having a couple adult beverages on my friend Brian last night, and I will be thinking about him often as I, I have a few sips 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 of poke all right um i've gotten quite far behind especially on one of our normal travelers so i'm going to start and try to do a little catch up today first before we get to bethany this was a, just a lovely picture. Cindy Mole flying over the mountains on her way to, uh, where's she going to Fresno? Someplace in California. I just thought that was a really neat picture. Now, those of you folks that uh, might have missed the eclipse, uh, you know, you don't have to miss it forever. There's going to be another one in 2045. Now, I'm probably not going to be here. I wouldn't I'd be surprised if I make it 20 more years. 
Uh, but anyway, what you want to do, folks, is plan on going to Orlando and doing the eclipse with Mickey Mouse. Now, that would be a treat. Just a suggestion. You can put it on your calendar now. Orlando, Florida, Tallahassee, Little Rock, Tulsa, Colorado Springs. Ooh, getting out in the mountains. That would be neat, too. Grand Junction, Colorado. Redding, California, Northern California. Uh, but anyway, it's going to be on August the 12th of 2045. Schedule it now. Now, our friend Bethany, Bethany Bartley down in Tampa, she's been on this show a bunch of times. She uh, flew from Tampa to Barcelona. Been a couple of days here. I I promise you, folks, I'll catch up on on her pictures because she she posts such lovely things for me to use. She's on the Azamara quest. You know, she loves Azamara. This is her digs. <laughs> That's the suite on the Azamara quest that she's in. And she's, you know, Bethany's solo traveler, just like me. That's pretty nice, pretty nice little place. All right, so she was in uh, Alicante, Spain. I guess this was yesterday. And, of course, you know, she's always taken interesting uh, excursions. She went to a, a chocolate factory and museum. This, of course, is the museum part of that. And she posted a whole bunch of pictures of that. And, of course, she, uh, you got to show some chocolate for sale. Uh, but this uh, this is in Villa jo Via Joyosa, Spain. And uh, that, after the uh, museum, she went to the beach. Well, look at this. This is a wheelchair accessible beach. That's a ramp all the way down to the water. How about that? So an accessible accessible beach in Villa Joyosa, Spain. España. All right, so the top story today. Comes from Meyer Werft. Of course, Meyer Werft is one of the major uh, shipyards. Known for its design and innovation as the world's largest cruise ship builder. Since 2021, the company has revealed new concepts every single year. The concept shows where the company believes cruise ship construction is heading in the future. This year, the concept the team has come up with is called Origin, a design that is miles from what we would call traditional cruise ship design and functionality today. It's something that we could see long into the future and drastically different from today's vessels, such as the new LNG-powered cruise ships. The modern-looking ship introduces an asymmetrical design that is nothing like the typical ship-like exterior and interior. The form and layout are different, but that's because they want to make it easier for people to move around and are prepared for any future needs. A major feature of the futuristic-looking ship is the Sky Lounge, an innovative space designed to extend outward maximizing the interior while offering passengers a unique experience. The lounge can also be retracted back into the vessel's hull, minimizing wind resistance. So you go to the Sky Lounge and the thing picks up and moves you out over the water and you sit there and drink with, I'm, I'm sure it's absolutely stunning views. And then when you're when you're not using it, they suck it back in the boat and hide it. Anyway, my, you know, pretty weird looking ship to me. 
But who knows what's going to happen in the future. All right, I'll be back with a couple more news stories after a quick break from one of our fine network sponsors. And the next story today, folks, comes from our friends over at Carnival. A guest on a recent Carnival cruise has reached out to the cruise line's brand ambassador, upset because their stateroom attendant ignored the do not disturb sign on the door and entered their cabin all the same. While this may seem like a violation of the guest's privacy, it's actually part of the cruise line's policy and the attendant was taking the appropriate steps to ensure the guest's wellness. The guest, who has not been identified, reached out to John Heald, the brand ambassador to notify him of the incident and express their displeasure at the sign being ignored. How would you like it if a cabin cleaner walked in on you, John Heald? Our cleaner knocked and walked in on us, ignoring the do not discern sign we had, we had outside. This was not accept, acceptable, the guest wrote. Is this how Carnival trains their workers? John Heald's response, I have since spoken with the housekeeping manager who explained what had happened. The guest had their snoozing sign out for more than 24 hours. So it's company policy that we check the safety and well-being of the guests, and that's what happened here. So if you're going to complain about something, folks, maybe you should have a little better idea about what you're complaining about. All right, we talked about a bar going out over the water. How about swinging out over the water? I might actually do this one. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I got to check and make sure that uh, it takes fat men. But I might actually uh, uh, try this one. And a lot of these things I wouldn't even think about doing. MSC Cruises has announced the first of its kind thrill attraction to be found aboard the upcoming MSC World America. Cliffhanger is an overwater swing ride dangling above the ocean from the ship's top deck and giving thrill-seekers an unparalleled view, along with an unforgettable adrenaline rush. Now, I would want to film this, folks, if I was on there. And then I'd be afraid I'd drop the damn camera, drop the phone in the drink. But anyway, the announcement comes exactly one year before the ship's anticipated naming ceremony on April the 9th, 2025, and will undoubtedly help build excitement and interest in the new megaship with even more new features to be revealed in the months to come. I'm sure we're going to hear a lot about this one. Uh, Speaking of MSC, MSC Cruises held a ceremony to mark the first steel cutting for its third world-class ship, which will carry the name MSC World Asia. I wonder where they're going to send that one. Now under construction at Chantier de de Atlantique Shipyard, the new vessel is set to enter service in 2026. I tell you what, folks, MSC just keeps going and going and going. Personally, I like MSC. I saw somebody posted. They were on... uh, Seascape and were complaining about the crew on Seascape or something. I was on Seascape. I I thought Seascape was fine. I was on it. Anyway, I think a lot of people just complain about MSC just to have something to say. All right, so... uh, 
you know, everybody has been talking about the uh, much anticipated celebration key. So Carnival announced some details of Locano Cove during the annual Sea Trade Cruise Global Conference, which was held this week in Miami Beach. One of Celebration Key's five portals, Lacona Cove will be an exclusive retail portal offering a variety of stores and kiosks featuring everything from souvenirs to fine jewelry. Designed to immerse guests in the richness of Bahamian heritage and creativity. During the announcement of the new portal, Carnival Cruise Line President Christina, uh, Christine Duffy said, Lacona Cove will be a treasure trove, a place for our guests to immerse themselves in the spirit of the Bahamas and find locally inspired keepsakes, symbols of paradise they can share with loved ones or cherish for themselves for years to come. And the last story today, folks, you know, I've got a friend who has lived in Thailand. Well, he retired about 20 years ago and uh, has been living in Thailand ever since. And he keeps inviting me and I've just, I've never been to Thailand. Well, this kind of intrigues me a little bit. The government in Thailand, in a strategic push to expand Thailand's footprint in the global tourism market, the government has unveiled ambitious plans to enhance Koi Samui's appeal as a leading cruise destination. Central to the initiative is developing a state-of-the-art cruise terminal part of a broader effort to improve infrastructure and attract a larger international visitor base to the island and the Surat Thanai province. Prime Minister Thavizan also proposed introducing seaplanes to diversify travel options, directing the Minister of Transport to include this in the cabinet meeting before the year's end as a New Year's gift to the people of Koi Samui. He also mentioned discussions with private airport owners about expansion to accommodate more tourists. Interesting that they got private airports. The Prime Minister plans to revisit Koi Samui later this year to monitor progress. He, minister, he mentioned that if the cruise terminal, marina, and seaplane terminal are established, leading to increased tourist arrivals, it would benefit the private sector to bid for duty-free operations. Always looking for an angle to make more money. And that's fine. I don't disagree with any of the folks that are providing services for the cruise industry to make some money. That's what keeps them there. Y'all. All All right. So I've long said that when uh, Hot Air Tom and I are in Rome next year, I was going to go to the Pope and and drink a, a glass of wine with the Pope. Hot Air Tom didn't believe me. I can't imagine why. Well, come to find out, I may just be going to see the Pope. I don't know. Uh, I'm I'm working on a piece that actually comes from John Morris, who met with the Pope. And he relates how it's done. So that could be interesting on a future trip to Europe. All right. So uh, that's going to wrap up today's uh, the news portion of today's show. I never, when I do these early morning things, I never expect a lot of people to be here, but I'm always surprised. Joanne's with us. There's Gretchen. Just thinking about you. Hope you get home today. I hope I get home today too. I mean, Gretchen, this has been a, a lovely hotel. I have 
nothing bad to say about the hotel at all. There are, you know, two restaurants that are an easy roll. Not my favorite restaurants in the world, but the food's been fine. You know, it's, it's, and they don't have a bar at either one of them, but it's Bob Evans is on one side and Panera Bread is on the other. But I mean, the food's been fine. Um, they do a, a continental breakfast, which, you know, I always prefer more breakfast. But if I really want breakfast, all I got to do is roll next door to Bob Evans. And that's been great breakfast. Excellent uh, handicap accessible room. Uh, the only, and I talked to him yesterday about the door being so heavy. And she made a note of it to talk to the maintenance man to see if it's adjustable. So it wouldn't be quite so heavy. Uh, but it's been, you know, it's been a lovely place to stay. I just am sorry that I'm staying the after day because my car died. It didn't die. It got broke. Uh, so yeah, I'm, but I'm ready to, you know, I just soon get on home. I got stuff to do. Mike's with us. Says good morning to everybody. There's Steve out in Kentucky. Steve did some checking yesterday when I talked about the the Pogue bourbon. And it is a Kentucky bourbon. So, I mean, Steve and I are of the same belief that if it's if it's not made in Kentucky, it's not bourbon. It's whiskey. So, but yeah, it's and it's really it's quite good. I, I mean, you know, I have a kind of a special taste with being a, an Elijah Craig drinker. But this was smooth like that. I mean, it's just a slight, a little difference in taste, but not bad. I just, I really enjoyed it. I mean, I didn't drink the whole bottle, but yeah, it's really good. So try it, Steve. Uh, and I have no idea if it's, you know, if it's $10 a quart or $90. I have no idea on, on the price range, you know, because I've never, I don't know that I've ever seen it in, in the liquor stores in Virginia. But then I don't really go to stores much anymore because, you know, that's a pain in my, you know what. All right, let's see here. Gretchen says, um, last cruise we inadvertently pressed the do not disturb function on the electronic panel outside our cabin our cabin steward caught us going in and asked if we were okay yeah i yeah i've never i've never put out a do not disturb sign i don't even think about doing that but then i see my cabin steward three or four times a day because i i mean i know that i'm a load for these guys because there's constantly something that i need or something to do or you know can you do this can you do that so I know I'm I'm a load. So but I see I see my guys you know three or four times a day. It doesn't doesn't matter if if they're to the new policy of one time a day service. I still see my guys a lot. Uh but yeah, I wasn't I wasn't aware that that's part of their instructions that they if you haven't seen somebody for X amount of time, you go see them. I, and I, I I'm in favor of that. And if, you know, if they're doing something that they shouldn't be seen, then they're, they're wait until the lights are off, folks. I don't know. Katie's with us. Good morning, Katie. Listening on the road. Um, glad he pointed it out. We wondered why we hadn't got service yet. Yeah, that was, that's it. Jamin Watson, good morning. Hello to you too. Good to see you again. You can get an audience with the vote if you ask far enough out. My husband's uh, aunt had a picture with him. I don't think she had any wine though. Yeah, well, I don't know about the wine part of it. But actually, actually, this particular pope uh, d 
does a lot of things for the disabled. And I mean, you have, when you do the audience with him, you're like right next to where, you know, he's out there doing his Pope things. <laughs> and then he comes over and sits down and talks to you. I mean, I think it's just awesome. So, yeah, I'm gonna, I'll look into that next time I'm going to be in Rome for sure. Steve says, I think it's $110 a bottle. Well, no wonder it's it's good. It's a it's a premium bourbon. Yeah. Not surprised. I, I, I tell you, I got good taste in bourbon. Are you Catholic? You can go. Um, no. But that's okay. I still gonna uh, you know, I, I still would like to, to do that. Uh, if it helps any, I played the organ for Catholic services for about three years and did some Gregorian chanting and some singing. Now, there's some weird things in my background that you guys don't know about, but anyway, you can go anyway. Yeah. So anyway, that's, uh, you know, that's, will be something different to do in Rome. Yeah, there's a lot to do in Rome. Uh, I mean, you got to do all the touristy things in Rome, too. So I'm not sure how much, if any, time we're going to have. Might do have to do a special trip to Rome. Yeah, that'd be all right, too. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for today. Thanks for being here bright and early. Hopefully, tomorrow morning, at normal time, I'll be in studio. Let's keep the fingers crossed that I head out of Ohio and get back in the Southland today. Uh, when are you in Rome? I don't know, Gretchen. Um... Next year sometime, I think. Oh, no, maybe uh, we go into Rome, and then we have to jump on a plane and go to Barcelona. I may not have time in Rome. Let's see. So here's here's the, the situation. Oh, yeah, I was supposed to be doing this for the whole show. and didn't do it. Why didn't I turn that on? Oh, well. We still have 11 cabins on the Alaska cruise, folks. Uh, not 11, seven. Seven cabins, four inside, two obstructed view, and one ocean view. Uh, and, and that's it on the whole boat. All right. Um, what was I doing? Okay, so... I just posted these. These are all just up on on my uh, uh, cruise with Chili page. This is, you know, I'd already posted about the uh, transatlantic uh, on the Bliss in January, and then the Bliss is going into dry dock, and. Hot Air Tom and I are going to bum around London slash Europe for a month and get back on the Bliss sailing back home. And I'm saying Hot Air Tom, that is if Cindy lets him go. Then I turn around just a couple weeks after that and I go back from New York to Rome on the Epic. Of course, I'm looking forward to that because I love the Epic. I really like the Epic a lot. But here's the problem with that. I get into Rome on April the 15th. And I'm sailing on the breakaway on April the 16th out of Barcelona. So I've got to hop over to um, 
Barcelona, and then does that stop Barcelona, Palma, Cagliari, Naples? Ah, I go into Rome on that trip. Yes, so I will be back in Rome. So maybe I'll have time to do that. I'll have to look at times and schedules and everything. So, yeah, so that's uh, that's when I'm going to be in Rome. Anyway, folks, uh, that would be cool. I'd like to see the Pope. I hope the Pope uh, is still kicking then. Of course, I hope I'm still kicking then, too. All right, guys. That's going to wrap it up for today. Thanks for being with me early. I do appreciate it, guys. I'll get all this processing up for everybody that normally sees us at 11. Uh, in the meantime... Uh, guys, if you uh, oh, smash that thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't, it doesn't cost you anything. And as always, stay safe, stay healthy, think about cruising. Hopefully one day soon we'll all get together on the high seas, maybe in Rome. That would be lovely. All right, guys, have a great day. I hope I'm in Virginia tomorrow. See you then. I regularly post videos on all facets of the travel and cruise industry. So if you like to keep up with the latest in cruise ships, ports of call, cruises themselves, chilly chats, and travel and cruise industry news, just hit the little subscribe button in the lower right-hand corner, hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when a new video is up or we go live. This video was produced by Chili's Cruises.